Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't been here before, this is probably why you're here. This is a 2010 Chevrolet Traverse, and we have a left front ABS sensor code uh, that it's had for a couple of months now. So on a previous video, if you go back uh, in my channel, you'll see that we did the sensor right here on this video right here. And guess what? That didn't do it. Uh, when we were putting the sensor back together, we noticed that, uh, or I noticed, I don't know who we, 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 do you see anybody else here? I don't, it's just me. So when I was putting the sensor in, when I finally got the sensor in there, or I was going to clean up the reluctor wheel on the bearing, I noticed that, uh, it's missing a chunk of the reluctor ring or the reluctor magnet or whatever you want to call it. Now these vehicles don't have a grooved reluctor ring, like a metal ring with a bunch of slots in it, like most vehicles do, uh, that the ABS sensor uh, senses a pulse from. This is a magnet ring that is kind of glued to the back of the hub, and I'll show you guys that later. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to take this left front wheel off, we're going to get in there, get a little dirty, take that hub and bearing off, put the new one in. Hopefully everything goes really well. Probably not, I'm probably gonna end up having issues because that's how I do things around here, so. Anyway, let's get this video started. Enough of me talking. 2010 Chevrolet Traverse, left front hub and bearing. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Well, in my usual fashion around here, I could not find my 34 mil socket, so I had to go buy one. I uh, I lent these to somebody years ago, and I don't know. I uh, ah, so I spent 20 bucks. That was worth 20 bucks. Okay, so I've taken off the caliper slide bolts. We moved the caliper to the back. I took off these great big suckers right here. These are for the mounting bracket. That's just so we can remove the rotor. So now we have a small little set screw here to, to take out for the rotor. I think it's a 27, 27 I believe it is. Uh, now both of mine are broken, so I'm gonna have to figure something out and see if I can find something to get in there. So we got the rotor off of the vehicle, caliper bracket, calipers off. We got the axle nut off. That's a 34 mil uh, axle nut deep socket. So now the bolts uh, for the actual hub are here, one up here, one over here. But these are from the back of the knuckle. So we're going to have to access those from the rear. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn the steering wheel, give myself some access to these bolts, 
turn the wheel this way and hopefully they come out no problem. Don't expect any big issues. Famous last words because it doesn't go that well around here. All right, so here goes bolt attempt number one. I'm just gonna use my, what is this? These bolts are really small, 13 mil. Making sure the bolt head is nice and clean, of course. And I got this breaker bar. And I actually have lots of room in there, actually. So now let's be very careful. Oh, that went really well. That's great. So I'm going to get an extension in there. There's one. The other one's on top here. Might be a little tight in there. Yeah, that one's a lot tighter. So, I might have to get another extension in that one. All right, so this one I'm gonna try swivel. Let's see if the swivel works. Yeah, that appears to work really good. So, it's number two, no issues. All right, that went really well. Now we have one left on the other side. We're just going to turn the wheel this way. I'm going to try a little experiment that I saw online. I'm going to cut one of these studs out. Uh, punch the stud through the back till it comes out. I'm going to try and put a bolt and a nut through there to press it out because I could be beating on this for hours and uh, that's not really my plans for today. So this hub's coming out regardless. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. So what I've got here is I've got a bolt and the plan is to run the bolt through here through the stud that I just knocked out like so and we're going to try and run that through and I'm going to have this uh, well this bolt on the this nut on the other side with a spinning washer one's going to go this way one's going to go this way and hopefully we can drive that bolt in push the hub out I don't know let's give it a shot I got nothing to lose I'm going to pound on it anyway so let's try it Okay, so she's bottomed out. I got a bolt on the back, or a nut on the back and one on the front. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try and run this in. Just see what happens, just gently here. I might run out of thread. Okay, so I'm gonna have to hold the rear nut. Ran out of thread. So, I'm gonna put a block behind there or something. Or maybe a socket or, or maybe another nut. Let's try another nut. Well, now I've gone and messed the threads up, so. Okay, well, it's definitely applying some force, that's for sure, but we're applying it on the back and plate, which is not really what I wanted. I wanted a spot on the knuckle. I don't really see a good spot on the knuckle to apply any pressure. Well, 
Well, that could have very well worked if I had a stronger bolt. You can see what I did there. And the whole thought process was that it would just tighten this bolt and it would push up against the knuckle and release that hub. So I guess now we are resorting to pounding it off because I broke the bolt and now it's jammed in there because that's how we do things. Yeah. So it only took a couple minutes of banging that now I got the hub, it's separated from the knuckle. Uh, it's still not coming out because I can't swing, I can only swing this way, I can't swing the other way because I'll hit the back end plate. Um, so now that it's separated, I just drop some penetrating fluid down inside there. Um, this may have worked now that it's loose, but I'll never know because I broke it. But I do have another bolt, so I might give this another try with another bolt. Let's give it a shot. So did the bolt get the hub off? No. Did the bolt help in getting the hub off? Oh, I'm sure. Because it applied an awful lot of pressure uh, right about this area here. And it was pushing. So every time I would hit, I would just tighten up that bolt and it would draw it out, draw it out. And uh, yeah, no, I think we're in good shape. So here's the sensor that I replaced uh, a few weeks ago. So I'm going to clean up all this surface right here. This is all going to get cleaned up. I'm going to grease up the axle shaft here before I stick it into the new hub. And uh, just making sure this is this mating surface is nice and clean. One little nick right there on the knuckle, which is far away from the mounting surface, so I'm not worried about that. And let me show you that hub. So here's our hub, and we can see on the back here, this is the magnetic ring that that sensor reads, and there was my problem right there. So that was broken. So this is kind of on me. Um, could have saved myself you know 30 some dollars whatever it was for that sensor and a little bit of work up on top but it's a learning experience uh, so next time make sure that uh, before you write off the wheel speed sensor for your c0035 that you inspect this magnetic ring on the back magnetic ring i mean i can peel that off with my just with this little scraper there so so there we go hubs off i'm going to clean that mounting surface and we're going to clean up our pile of bolts we have on the floor over there. And we're going to get this thing back together. So this is going really well. So all I've done now is I've gone ahead and I've just uh, lightly mounted the hub. Um, to get them on, you might find it a, bit, a little bit of a pain in the butt trying to push it back on while you're trying to hold the back and plate and stuff like that. So basically what I just did is I just kind of pushed it all together, kind of slid the hub in, just put the nut for the axle on, maybe uh, one or two turns until I couldn't turn it anymore. Then I just drew in one of the bolts in the back for the hub right here. So I just drew one in a little bit and then I drew another one in another one in just enough to go ahead and just seat the hub. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to back one bolt out at a time, put some Loctite on them and then put them in and torque them. And then we can get that uh, putting the brakes back together and checking the slides over there. Of course, we're going to make sure the slides are nice and uh, nice and loose. And we're going to clean up that brake rotor touch.
All right, we are good. We got everything back together. Very simple. So I made sure that I cleaned off the inside of the rotor before I put the rotor onto the new hub. Make sure there's no rust in between those two surfaces. Got my rotor set screw back in. Caliper mounting bracket bolts back here. These are the big guys right here. You can see right there. And I've got my caliper slide bolts back in over here. Everything's cleaned up nice. Made sure that my brake hose is not twisted when I put it back together. We have our nut for our axle torqued down. Everything's looking good. Now, what I have mentioned in some of my past videos is anytime you take apart the brakes or you remove one of the brake calipers, always a good idea before you move the vehicle is to pump the brakes a couple times and that'll just reseat that caliper back onto that rotor because first or second brake apply, you might not have very good brakes and you couldn't uh, maybe end up in a workbench or a garage door or running somebody over. Not cool, so we're gonna pump the brakes a couple times. I'm gonna plug in the code reader. I'm gonna clear that code, throw the wheel back on, put it outside, go for a ride and just pray to the car gods that that did it because I'm tired. All right, well, we are good. So I just took a kilometer and a half ride up the road and back. And uh, look at this, we have no lights, so we're good. So I believe we got our problem solved finally. Uh, cost me a speed sensor, but uh, that's all right. Who knows? You know, I'm just gonna tell myself, speed sensor was probably bad anyway. You know, cause that's what I do. So again, guys, if this really helped you out, uh, I'd really appreciate a subscribe or a like and hit that notification bell for future videos. It's a pretty good vehicle for the most part. It doesn't require a whole lot of repairs, but if it's something quick that I can show you guys, I'd be more than willing to do that. So again, thank you so much for watching. Really hope this helped you out. 2010 Traverse, hub and bearing, C0035 code cleared, and we are good to go. And we will see you guys next time.